Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. As you guys may know, I recently got my Ninja Camilla to plus 10 on the A Hero Rises banner, so I thought it might be fun to do a kind of little barracks showcase, uh, just to showcase some of the units that I've been building recently, but this barracks showcase has a little bit of a twist to it. So obviously you guys know I do spend money on this game, I subscribe to Fey Pass, and I buy orbs sometimes, so the availability of fodder that I have to give my units is a lot higher than someone who's free to play or who maybe doesn't spend as much money on the game. So I thought it might be fun to do a very unique take on the barracks showcase where I only showcase basically builds that are on a budget. So how I built my favorite units on a budget and hopefully this can give you some ideas on how you can build your favorites too. Uh, so first off, we've got Ninja Camilla herself. I thought it would be only fitting to start off the showcase with the unit who I have. Um, now, obviously, the first thing in this build is the weapon, Arcane Eclipse. Obviously not necessarily budget, but I would argue it kind of is because it's on the A Hero Rises banner right now. And you can spark on that for free even if you don't have Fey Pass. So pretty easy to just go in there, go up to 40 summons, and pick up an Ophelia at the spark. Um, and I haven't refined it yet because I am assuming this is on a budget, so you might not have the refining stones for it. So we've got that Arcane Eclipse because the special trigger cooldown count minus one and also the times pulse effect synergizes really well with the rest of this build that I'm trying to do. So this is actually an AoE build, so with Blazing Wind, which is a really strong AoE. So we've got Fury as the A slot to help increase her attack stat, which is visible attack, and that stacks well with Blazing Wind, and obviously Life and Death 3 as well, just to give even more attack. So as you can see, she has 76 base attack, which is really, really good for activating Blazing Wind. Um, and then Brash Assault is also a super budget skill. Uh, if unit initiates combat against a foe that can counter and unit's HP is less than or equal to 40%, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. So obviously synergizing really well with the chip damage from Fury, it's pretty easy to get into Brash Assault range. And then you get that guaranteed follow-up, which you might be asking like, well, you already have a guaranteed follow-up in Arcane Eclipse. Why would you want another one? Well, two layers of guaranteed follow-up can help get around things like follow-up negation. So I just thought this was a really, really cool idea as a, as a good budget skill to give her as a B skill. Um, and then threaten speed res because I unfortunately just didn't have the fodder for uh, speed res menace, but I still think this is a pretty good budget skill to give her. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this build and let me know if you would try it out. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to make a showcase of it because it's honestly been working really, really well for me. All right, next up is Lumera, who's one of my most recent plus tens. Uh, she's someone who's in the Grail shop, and obviously she comes with no follow-up as a B skill, which is really good for inheritance. But here's an idea for if you actually want to build her yourself. So uh, she obviously has a really good attack stat and a really good defense stat. So this build really aims to capitalize on both of those things. So she's got attack defense ideal 2 as the A slot, and browse attack defense 3 as the seal. Uh, as the C skill, obviously just to help boost her attack and defense even more. She's also got hit and run, which is kind of like a budget close call if you don't really have the fodder for close call like me. Um, or if you don't have Vital Astra, you can feel free to just give her Astra. It's honestly a pretty good approximation. Uh, helps deal a lot of extra damage, which is really nice, and that stacks really well with her high attack. Um, and then Odd Defense Wave as the seal to help buff herself and others if she's adjacent to someone rather than being away from someone. Uh, so basically, she's going to be getting a defense buff pretty much every turn this way. So I thought that was a really cool way to build her to capitalize on her attack and defense stats. Uh, next up is Duma, who obviously someone who you guys know I've really been struggling, trying to plus 10 him. He is a duo unit, which means that he scores really well in arena. So for this one, I tried to go with like a budget arena type build, just so that if you guys do want to build him uh, for arena, which is what mode he's really meant for, this is a, an idea for you if you don't want to really break the bank with the fodder. So harsh command plus and attack speed bond four, they are both like high scoring skills, but they are both available from a single copy of uh, Valentian Catria, I believe. Not sure if she's in the Divine Codes or if I got her as a as a, a four-star special, but either way, not too hard to pick up a copy of her. Um, and then obviously Aether as a special. This is the best budget special to give someone for Arena because it scores high and all it costs you is 20k feathers from a Krom. Um, then as the base skill, we've got Renewal. 
uh, as the seal we've got attack speed bond 3 as well. I figured like since we're going with the budget option of attack speed bond 4 and harsh command plus, why not just try and capitalize on his speed even a little bit more? Honestly guys, with both of these, he gets up to 32 speed. Um, and then with support from the people around him, that can get even higher. So it's honestly not the worst thing. Um, and then as his C skill, honestly guys, he doesn't do that well against a lot of ranged threats. So I was like, well, maybe it doesn't even make sense to have, uh, far save on him. Honestly, if you have near save, I would recommend giving that to him, but obviously that's not a budget skill. So I just went with spur attack res. I believe this actually came along with a fodder from renewal. So really great way to bundle some fodder and get some good value out of this unit in arena. Uh, next up, this is my New Year's Fafnir. Obviously a lot of you guys don't really have him, but I just thought it would be fun to do like a free-to-play take on the build that I have for him. So first off, we've got Scallop Blade, which this comes in the Ephemera codes. I believe we got a Summer Ursula, and she's the one who came with that. So I really wanted to build around this. So as you can see, it's if penalty is active on foe, grants attack speed plus five during combat. So we really want that penalty to be active on the foe, which is why we've got res ploy to help uh, debuff the foe's res and also defense smoke to debuff the foe's defense after combat. Um, and then we've got fury as his a skill, great budget option available on a four star Hinata uh, and vengeance, which I feel like combos really well with the chip damage from Fury. He's going to be doing a bunch of extra damage when that activates. Um, and then Water Sweep, because Ninja Camilla is honestly a really big threat nowadays, and I feel like this can help you get around that uh, to make sure that she can't counterattack. And honestly, any other kind of Mage Nukes as well, because he does have really high speed, so he's almost always going to be activating this. Uh, next up is Plumeria. She's someone who I really like too, and I would love to plus 10 this year. Um, so this is another, like, type of build that you might not typically see on her, but I think it's honestly pretty good. Uh, so as the special, we've got Aether. Might seem like high cooldown, and she's kind of slow, so she's not going to be doubling often, but that's exactly why we gave her Quick Repose too. So on enemy phase, uh, after one or two combats, it'll be really easy for her to activate Aether, and then obviously the actual effect of Aether is quite good, will help keep her healed up, and deal a bunch of extra damage. Um, and obviously she's also got a really high res stat, so trying to capitalize on that with res plus three. Very easily available skill, great budget option for a lot of units who really want high res. And then as a C skill, we've got Threaten Res to help debuff the foe's res so that she can do even more damage, and Res Faint uh, to help debuff the foe's res even more. Then we've got Aversa, who's about to get a Resplendent, so I know a lot of you might be wondering, should I build her? How do I build her? Well, here's an option. Um, so I gave her the Owl Tome, which is really good because it can boost her attack speed and defense res by a huge amount. If she's got four adjacent allies, that's plus eight to every stat. That's honestly really, really good. Uh, I haven't refined it because again, this is like budget, assuming you don't have the refining stones for it, but you can go ahead and refine it for whatever stat you want. Uh, and then we've got Ignis, uh, which combos really well with attack defense solo, because her defense is actually quite high, so she'll be able to activate a really high uh, really high damage Ignis. Um, and then she's got Mirror Strike as the A skill, which helps uh, deal extra attack and res on player phase, and also Red Tome Breaker. I was like, what's a good budget B skill that I can give her? Uh, and I honestly really came up with Red Tome Breaker because if you think about it, there are a lot of Grand Hero Battle Red Tomes, and she's one of them, but I feel like this will really help her get a leg up in that category and make sure that she can double all of them, like including Julius, uh, Garnef, I'm sure there are others whose names I'm forgetting, uh, but yeah. And then Panic Ploy, because she does have really high natural HP, so this will help uh, inflict panic on people within cardinal directions, which is really good. And the condition for this is less restrictive than the condition in her base weapon to inflict panic. Uh, she needs three higher HP to inflict panic with her weapon. In this, it's just one higher. So I honestly think this is a really great budget option. Uh, next is Summer Claude, who for a lot of people was a plus 10 merge project, even for some free to play players, because obviously he was a four star special. So it was quite easy to plus 10 him. Um, so daggers can kind of be hard to come around, so we just stuck with his base dagger, which is quite good. 
uh, Draconic Aura, he has really high attack, so this is really good. Steady Blow really helps give him that extra speed, which he might need to quad people, and also the extra defense, because honestly, his defense really isn't that bad. Um, and then honestly, guys, Fallen Star is bugged in Summoner Duels, so I don't even know if it's the greatest option to give him. So I was like, what can I replace it with? That's a budget option that's a little bit better. Uh, so I've got Quick Repost 3 on him here. I realize Quick Repost 3 still needs 20k feathers to upgrade it. It's not available at 4 stars. So if you don't have the feathers for it, you can feel free to just go with QR2. That's fine. Uh, but this will allow him on enemy phase to double the foe, which could be really, really helpful because obviously the effect of his weapon is only on player phase. So this is kind of like a more mixed phase take on Summer Claude, and I think it can be really interesting. Um, and then we've got Blade Session, combos for the player phase with Steady Blow, and I just kept his default speed defense brain because it's honestly a really good skill, and it is what gets more budget than something that already comes in a unit's base kit, right? Uh, just a couple more. We've got Faye. So this is another unit who I really like. I was super excited that she got a Resplendent, and... Guys, a little known thing about this game, you might be wondering, how do I counterattack to units who have Null C Disrupt? Or sorry, how do I counterattack to units who have like the uh, Dazzling Staff effect when I don't have Null C Disrupt? Because obviously Null C Disrupt is a very not budget skill. Like you need to get it from somewhere, you need to summon, you need to spend orbs for it. So how can you counterattack to units who have the Dazzling Staff effect? Uh, well, a little known fact about this game is actually if you stack multiple layers of Distant Counter, that actually gets through it. So here, with Lightning Breath and with Distant Counter A and Distant Counter Seal, we're actually going through two layers of the Dazzling Staff effect. So imagine if Faye has had the Flash effect applied to her and someone is attacking her with the Dazzling Staff effect. Well, she's got three layers of Distant Counter, so she's able to get around those two different layers of Dazzling effect. So. Uh, obviously, Distant Counters the A might not be that budget, so if you can only afford Lightning Breath and then the Seal, that's fine too. That'll still get you around most situations where you've got Dazzling Staff, uh, and that's really, really strong. Um, and then we've got Aether on her. This is just a really good option for Arena, but also in general. Even though it's 6 cooldown, that's not too bad, because it's only really one more than the 5 cooldown on Aether. Um, but yeah, Lightning Breath does increase the cooldown by 1, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, she's got Rally Defense Res to buff the foe. Uh, sorry, to buff her allies. And then Odd Res Wave to buff herself, because her res is quite good. Um, and then Wrath, which is honestly pretty good as well. It will help her make sure that she can activate her special and deal extra damage. Uh, next up, we've got Claude. So this, he just recently got a refine, but I know not everyone has refining stones to give him his refine. So uh, I just gave him Brave Bow, which is available on four star Gordon. If you have 20K feathers to spend, feel free to give him Brave Bow Plus, because obviously that does have more might, which is better. Uh, but I just went with Brave Bow. And obviously, if you don't have Deadeye, Astra is also a really good option as well, because 150% uh, boosting damage dealt is no joke. This is actually quite strong. Um, and then he's got Heavy Blade to help him activate that Astra more often, because full cooldown is pretty high. Um, and then we've kind of got like a mixed phase build going on here, just to make sure that he's really good in both player phase and enemy phase. So the Brave Bow and the Heavy Blade are for player phase. And then on enemy phase, if he gets attacked, we've got Fierce Stance to increase his attack and also Quick Repost just to make sure he can double. So Brave Bow makes sure he can double on player phase and Quick Repost makes sure he can double on enemy phase. And then we've got Spur Attack as his C skill just to buff his allies. Really, really good skill, really great budget skill. Honestly, one of my favorite budget skills. All right, next we've got Brave Claude. Uh, so with this one, again, we haven't refined his weapon because I'm assuming that a lot of people might not have the stones for it. So we've just got the base Wind Parthia. Honestly, a really good weapon. Um, so he's running Reposition. Noon time for some extra healing just for that sustainability. Then he's running Mirror Strike for when he wants to initiate on player phase and Vantage for on enemy phase. So this honestly synergizes together really well. So when he's doing well, when he's got high HP with Noontime and the Wind Parthia healing, you don't have to worry about anything. But when his HP is low, that's when the Vantage comes in and he can make sure to attack and kill the foe before they can even wound him even further. So yeah, this is just a really great build. 
to make sure that you've got both phases covered. And obviously we've got the defense tactic and attack tactic, just so that he can help buff the allies around him. Uh, make sure you run him on a team where tactics is applicable, because then he'll be a really great buff bot for the people around him. Uh, on to the last two. So we've got this legendary Claude. Um, I know at first glance, close foil isn't necessarily low budget, but you could also go with close counter or even something like steady stance three could work as well. I just thought it would be really interesting because he's got actually pretty decent mixed bulk, pretty good. Um, and he's got null follow up in his weapon. So I was like, I feel like it's a waste to not at least try some kind of tanky build with him. So you've got close foil, you've got guard to make sure the foe can't make their special on him, and savage blow just to weaken the enemies around. Really great budget skill. Um, and then shield session just to make him even more tanky. So with this build, uh, because he's got uh, sling, noontime will activate as soon as someone attacks into him and he retaliates, he'll have noontime ready, which is great for that self-sustained healing. And finally, uh, probably my favorite build out of this whole batch. There's my Linhart. Uh, you guys might not even know, but I do really like Linhart and I have a plus 10 of him. Um, and kind of like the double, triple distant counter strat, this is something else that a lot of people don't know about Faye. Uh, if you run double Wrathful Staff, you're actually dealing double the damage. So uh, healers normally deal half damage without Wrathful Staff, then they deal full damage with single Wrathful Staff, and then with two layers of Wrathful Staff, they are actually dealing double the damage. And guys, it honestly shocks me that I don't see more people doing this. Like, I, I, I see almost no one doing this. I assume it's because people don't know, but this is really the way to make your healers do as much damage as they possibly can. Um, so we've got Physic on him for healing. Uh, I couldn't afford the 20k feathers for Physic Plus. Um, and then as a special, honestly guys, if you can't afford the new healer special, it's not really worth giving him a special at all. I just feel like there's not really that great specials for healers, uh, so I just left it blank. Um, and then we've got Brazen Attack Speed 3, in case he ever gets below 80% HP, he can increase his attack and speed so he can do even more damage. Uh, and then Breath of Life, honestly, since you're trying to use him as more of an offensive unit rather than as a healer anyway, this is a really good way to do some passive healing on the people around you. It's honestly really smart, and I remember in the early days of Tempest Trials, uh, when I didn't want to carry a healer with me and Tempest Trials used to be a lot harder, I actually used to run Breath of Life on someone, uh, and it was honestly really, really strong. So he's just basically a nuke who's also healing with this. Um, and also Mystic Boost, just to uh, g help give him that extra sustainability and make him last even longer. He does have really high defense and res, but I feel like you can never go wrong with a little bit of extra bulk. So yeah, that was the showcase of uh, a bunch of my favorite units with budget builds. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully this was entertaining. Um, and please disregard everything I have been speaking about for the past 17 minutes. Obviously, this is a joke. Uh, do not t do not use these builds. This is not legal advice. Happy April Fools, guys. Uh, three layers of distant counter will not get you around dazzling staff. Uh, two layers of raffle staff will not get you around uh, doing double damage. That was all. That was all a joke. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope this was entertaining. I hope this was a little fun video to start off your April. Um, and yeah, thank you so much to the Promenaders for all your support. Super appreciate you guys. Um, and yeah, thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye!